Hello, today I'm going to show you the top 10 reasons to buy your kid an e-reader over a tablet. The first reason I have number number one, there are no distractions on a Kindle or any reader for that matter. When you want your kids to read a book on a tablet, there are a great deal of distractions. These distractions can include playing games, watching a movie, or looking at videos on like YouTube or just browsing the web. As you can see, you, you, you unlock it, you open it up, it says, hey look, a game. And they'll click on the game. And say, hey, see a game? I can open it up and start playing it. And then they'll figure out how to use it. And they'll be like, hey, why don't I just play this game? So, they'll open it up, they'll see that, they'll see, hey, look, where is the Kindle app? Or whatever e-reader app you want to use. It's right there. But all they see along with it, they possibly could see a movies movies app, possibly. So whatever they have, they can easily see. They can easily get distracted by what there is. So automatically, they could have gone right over onto this and typed in YouTube.com if they really wanted to. If I can get it. And see, now they're on YouTube. They don't have to worry about anything. They just go on there and they see their distractions. Right away there are going to be distractions right when you open it up. Right when you open it up, there's no way to stop there from being any distractions on a Kindle. Or on a, uh, comp on a phone or a tablet. The distractions are right there, right in front of you right away. Especially when you have to go in here to find your app that you have for for reading books which I do have the Kindle app now on a Kindle if you unlock it the first thing that you will see when you unlock it is it says my Kindle up on the top and it shows you every single last one of your books so I have Oliver Twist, I have a dictionary, Copperfield, Sin Encyclopedia. Some of these I just downloaded to see what they were. So you can see. Right there. The first thing that happens when you open it up shows your shows your book library. It doesn't show anything else. There are no distractions. And this is a Kindle five way controller. There are no distractions on a Kindle. The Kindle is a perfectly per a perfectly distraction free thing. Because all you really need to do is turn it on and the start screen is the library. Now, number two. They're really cheap to buy. Yes, you can get an 80, you can get an $80 tablet from Walgreens or from any store that'll sell them for $80. But they'll be, but you'll hate it and hate yourself for buying it. The reason is Entry price for for a nice seven inch tablet is two hundred dollars, which which unless you have money to buy it, it isn't exactly money you want to throw out of your pocket. For just seventy dollars, you can get you seventy dollars though you can get a very nice Kindle. This online is worth seventy bucks. This online, when it was sold was worth $350. 70, 350. You or you can buy for a, something called the Tiny Kobo Mini for only $50. You can pay more than you can pay more, or you can pay more than that for an oil change. But would you rather pay $350 well or 200 for a good tablet or would you rather pay 40 to a hundred dollars for an excellent quality e-reader that'll last you longer than any phone will last you. Three, it is easy to use. Now, 
the first time a smartphone ever turns on, it goes on to a startup screen called Setup, where you have to go through a setup menu where you have to set up the Wi-Fi. You have to turn on Wi-Fi and set it up. Then you have to turn on, then you have to set up an email address with them. Then you have to set up the date and time and then you can name it. So that it can take you tw 20 minutes just to set up and then your kids won't be able to use it in time and they'll be really bored. That's the first time you ever set, set up a phone. You, for the first time you ever turn on a Kindle, the first thing you see is this library. There's no need to set it up, nothing. You see the dictionary that comes with it and you see the Kindle user guide and you see this archived items. Those are the three things you see. The archived items, the Kindle user guide, and the dictionary that comes built that comes built into it. Those are the three things you'll see when you pop when you turn on the Kindle for the first time. Then, right after you turn off the turn on the uh, f Kindle for the right when you turn on the phone for the first time, you there will not be a built-in e-reader application. You will have to go into the App Store and you will actually have to search up Kindle for it to load and then you can find one and it then it comes up underneath you'll actually have to search up an app to be able to load this you don't need an app built right in right there right when you start it up number four durable when you drop when you drop a tablet and an e-reader okay both of these can break but which one is more like the question is what which one is more likely to break first when YouTubers make drop test videos, they drop tablets, phones, Kindles, and every little last thing to drop to see if they break. When they drop, when they drop tablets, they always break right away. This phone, as you can see, I cracked the screen the first time I dropped it, and then I haven't dropped it since. This Kindle, I have, if you can see. Dropped it over and over again, and I dropped it face down like that onto the floor, and it didn't break. I've dropped this face flat onto the floor, and it broke the first time. This is more durable than even a phone. And I bought, and when kids read e readers, when kids read, an ebook, they're probably going to tend to drop it more often. And what would you? What do you want? A phone that can crack the first time you turn it on and drop it, or do you want a, ta a Kindle that can easily withstand drops over and over and over again and over again? Number five. Make the text any size you want it to be. So now what we're going to do is we're going to from the we're going to compare the we're going to compare what happens when you try to make the text any size. So I'm going to open up the Kindle app and I'm going to open up Oliver Twist over here. Now I have a book over here and a book over here. Now from the comparison between lodging text and an e to the e-reader on the tablet, there's not so much of a difference. The settings on the other hand are different. You press the menu button on here, and then you press that menu button over here, and then you press the A up there. And then you go to change font size up here, and you press the OK. Now there are two differences. On the Kindle, it shows you how big the font's going to be. The Kindle app, there's a plus and minus button. To change the to change the font, the Kindle has three different fonts called typeface, regular, condensed, and sans serif. The Kindle app has different fonts, around five to eight different fonts. 
on the Kindle. There is no color option because it's a black and white screen. And when you try to change the margin or the line spacing, there's small, medium, and large. On on the kin on the Kindle app, there is narrow, normal, and wide for margins. And then on the line spacing, there is narrow, normal, and wide also. And I personally don't know why this looks, how this would look better than a bigger, sort of bigger, would be a lot bigger, and it has a lot more space in between the words. From the line spacing to wide, or large on this one. And the Kindle has how many line, how, how many lines per words that there should be on, that there should be like. Fewer, fewest, and default. And then there's margins, narrow, normal, and wide. Which is much more confusing than how many wor pa words per, how many words per line. Then the Kindle has an option for screen rotation down here. It says screen rotation, you can put it backwards like this, or like this. As I will now go down to demonstrate. See? Now it's like this. Oh, you can even easily change it back. Whoops. And on here, all you need to do is go like that, and the text has changed sideways. And then you can go like this. Number six. They're easy on the eyes. The LCD displays favored by tablets won't damage your eyes exactly, but they'll surely strain them. Retina displays have made tablets more bearable, but they're still a pain to spend any significant amount of time with. If you like reading in more than hour-long spurts, the iPad or any tablet you have is going to be a struggle. E-ink, though, E-ink, which is what the Kindle has, is nothing. Neutral. No glare, no tired irises. It's a relief given at how much of our time we already spend staring at computers and phones so we can give ourselves a break. Because if you can see, I will make sure that the Kindle goes to a blank, sp blank page and you will see that the background is white with black ink on it so it won't ruin your eyes if you stare at it. I used to read on my phone and then it started hurting my eyes so much that I wanted to get one of these because I didn't like the strain and with this the viewing angles are a lot better on the tab on the Kindle than they are on the on the Kindle app on the phone 7 they are adaptable it is hard to remember in the middle of December but there's something wonderful about reading outside on any warm spring day. Even if you don't want to sentimentalize it, our gadgets are as only as good as the situation we can use them in. You've seen enough of any Kindle ad or any e-reader ad by now that e-readers work far better in sunlight than tablets that get that have glare. But ever since an awkwardly named Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light ushered in the age of the front lit e-readers, they're also preferable when the lights go out. Instead of a Galaxy Tab, or any type of tablet for that matter, blasting shine around you, or bedroom, an e-reader's glow is self-contained. It makes for happier reading and happier sleeping if you happen to share a bed with any light sleepers. This Kindle person doesn't have a backlight because I didn't buy it with it. But if you take this and you make the brightness all the way down low, it's sort of not fun to look at the screen. When you take this and you put it light against it, it is actually fun. Or if you have the Kindle with the glow touch, with the glow light, it actually keeps it contained inside this screen. And it's a lot nicer because you won't bother, let's say your your kid is going to go away. It won't bother their roommate. 
or anything. And it doesn't have any glare when you're looking outside. Like, if I t open up a, a light, you can easily read around a light versus the kin versus a phone that you're not able to. I, it's hard to see through it because it, the light just bounces off into your face. This light gets absorbed and it doesn't bounce back at you. Now, there's number eight, battery life. The battery life on uh, on a tablet is about four hours, and then you have to charge it for about two hours. In comparison to an e-reader, that the battery life is about 30 days to about 35. Most e-readers take about 30 minutes to charge. I actually left reading it constantly, my Kindle, for two months without charging it. It's, it, for, it takes, and it took 30 minutes afterwards to charge, and I love it because I use it during school in my dorm, and if I had this in what I'm reading with, I would have to charge it every four hours. This thing, I haven't, I barely plug it into the wall, and I just leave it or leave it on my bed, waiting for me to come back to when I from when I want to read it. Also, if you give your kids a tablet or a phone, they want they they'll they'll be using it, and when they're using it, the battery will die out constantly. It'll every four hours they're gonna come over to you saying, "Mommy, mommy," or "Daddy, daddy," can you charge this for me? And It'll be very confusing because it'll come over to you every four hours asking the same exact question. When you down, when you have a Kindle on the other hand, or any e-reader, they'll come over to you every month saying, Daddy, Daddy, or Mommy, Mommy, can you charge this for me? And you'll plug it in for 30 minutes, you unplug it, you say, here's your, kin here's your book back, you can now read it. And for 30 more days, they won't come over to you. Now, there actually is a built-in dictionary on both of these devices. Now, let's start with the built-in dictionary of the e-reader. My Kindle isn't touchscreen, but if you had a touchscreen Kindle, let's say you wanted the word goaded, goad. You go down to it, it pops up on the bottom. It's built in, so there's no having to download a, a dictionary onto this, so you have one automatically. And you see, right down there is what it shows. On the Kindle, let's say I want the word, let's say I want the word, let's just make this a lot bigger. I wanted the word unsettled. I, clicking on it doesn't do anything. You actually have to tap and hold on the word and I actually had to open, click on that button, press the English U, click, let's say I wanted the Dutch dictionary, to dis display dictionary, download the free dictionary, meaning you actually had to download it originally when you first got the app. So I actually had to, undo uh, to download this. And it's also intrusive because sometimes if you don't have buttons on the bottom here, this pops up and you can't click on download can't click on full definition. If you really wanted, you can't click on full definition now. And it's sometimes hard to get to. Versus, now, this versus this. You press the OK button, and then you click the OK again. It goes to the full definition. This, you have to reach behind, underneath, to get it. Now, this is the difference. It looks like that versus giving you the best definition possible. On the bottom of the screen, it doesn't pop up like 50 words up, 50 lines up. It only pops up two lines up, so you can continue reading. And then once you want to, you can press the back button and it'll go away and you don't have to worry. This, you unclick, it goes away, but it's very intrusive if you forget about if you want to forget about it and just continue reading so you know what that word means if it pops up again or if you understand the context of a word
Now, on both the Kindle and the phone, you can get free books. Or you can buy them. Number 10. Can, you can buy or get free books. On a tablet, usually you can only get one type of format for books, as I will show you. I downloaded right here. I downloaded Oliver Twist. I downloaded the .mobi format. I clicked just once for the, I clicked open up once with the Amazon Kindle app and it wouldn't work. And so you're only limited to one format to, to, to do with, this is called PDF. On this, you can use a format PDF, you can use the format .mobi, and you can use the format .crz, I believe that was the format I used. It pops up with an error message on here. This is this is actually the book I'm reading right now on this Kindle, which I actually have bookmarked. Error. Cannot open this file type. Right here. This book is perfectly working now. So I have downloaded 17 items. And that means four, 14 items are downloaded myself and PDF regular uh, books.mobi and then I had a CRZ Calvin and Hobbes comic on here. Now, it gave me, it didn't give me any error message when I downloaded it. Over here it gave me an error message. Right away it gave me the error message. So, if I were a mother or father, if I were a father and I had kids and they really loved books and they wanted to get a tablet for reading books, I would gladly buy them a Kindle. A phone hides too much distractions. If they want to read books, and then go. Buy a, I'll buy them a Kindle. I'd spend the 50, 70 bucks on a Kindle versus 70 bucks on a really bad tablet or 200 bucks on a tablet that they can read with. Because with my experiences of dropping and breaking things, this was the least least broken thing so far that I've dropped the most amount of times. I would recommend buying this. Less distractions. They're cheaper. Easier to use. They're durable. They make, you can change the text size just as easy with both. It's easier on the eyes for straining them. They're adaptable for the sun, for no glare, anything, so you can read it outside, which I do sometimes when, when I'm in school. I just sit outside reading the book, and I see it much better than I would on a phone would give me glare. The battery life is 100% better on this. The built-in dictionary, I like it better because it's easier to use on this. And you can still buy or get books for free on this much easier easier than you could on a phone which you have to have like billions of apps just to be able to use some of the book formats please rate comment and subscribe and tell me and tell me what you recommend what you what you would want to buy for your kids